There's separate names for these two. Do, do you guys remember what the names are for the two different types of friedel crafts reactions? Alkylation and acylation. That's right. Which one is this one? Alkylation. Right. Friedel crafts alkylation. And then this would be Friedel crafts acylation. Now, this is using some terminology I think we'd already talked about when we were working with carboxylic acid derivatives. This is just a normal carbon chain, alkyl group. But I think we've talked about how, I think we've talked about how this group is considered an acyl group. So it makes sense that this is called an acylation because we're adding an acyl group over here. Or another name for this, what's another name that's equivalent to acyl? Uh, Alkanoid. Oh. Remember that we can call things, we learned about acyl halides, also called alkanoyl halides. So this is both an acyl group and an alkanoyl group. So actually, I think it's a little bit more common to call this Friedel Crafts alkanoylation, although I guess either of these would be correct. Acylation or alkanoylation. An acyl group and an alkanoyl group are the same thing. The textbook calls it alkanoylation, but acylation seems reasonable too. So alkylation is when we add a normal carbon to the benzene. Alkanoylation is when we add a carbonyl carbon. Now it's very crucial here again that we attach the correct carbon. It's always going to be the carbonyl carbon that's attacking because that's the one that's going to have the halogen on it and the alkanoylation. Here we have the carbonyl with the halogen, so it's the carbonyl that it's attached. But it's going to be a big mistake to attach this carbon directly to the benzene ring. Now notice here that we had to add water in a separate step. Now the reason for this is, again, we're not going to go through the whole mechanism here, but remember that in the first step we were using this Lewis acid. But when we worked with aldehydes and ketones and carboxylic acids, we saw how do acids react with carbonyls? We know that acids like to attack the carbonyl oxygen. Now we usually focused on um, proton acids, where this got protonated. This is a Lewis acid, but still this aluminum would like to attack this oxygen over here. So we have, basically have to use the water to kind of wash that off, in a sense. We use the water to give the aluminum something else to react with. So if you didn't put in the water step, you would end up with the aluminum complex with the oxygen. We know that acids like to react with carbonyl oxygens. So we put in the water so the aluminum has somebody else to react with, and that washes the aluminum off. So it's important to memorize this step. Um, we have to put in the separate water step over here. That also means that this aluminum is not a catalyst because it's actually getting used up. The aluminum chloride is actually getting used up because it ends up attached to the oxygen. So we don't need a catalytic amount of the aluminum chloride here. We need a full equivalent of aluminum chloride to get the reaction to go to completion. That's a technicality. Sometimes the textbook uses H3O plus here instead of water, so either of those would seem like they're okay. This is the only case where we had uh, two separate sets of reagents that we needed to add. We didn't need that for alkylation. We didn't need the water step for alkylation because we weren't attaching the carbonyl. So there was nothing for the Lewis acid to attack. So if you want to attach a carbon chain to the ring, Friedel Craft seems like a good way to go. But who is usually better for attaching a carbon chain? Alkylation or alkanoylation? It turns out that alkylation has a number of disadvantages. We won't be able to go there over all of those right now, but alkylation has a number of disadvantages. There are some cases where it's okay to use this, but it's usually better and safer to use alkanoylation. Just to mention one disadvantage, um, what we're basically going to be doing here is giving this carbon carbocation character. The Lewis acid gives this carbon carbocation character, even if it doesn't make it a full carbocation. But we know that carbocations can rearrange. We know that carbocations can rearrange, and then if you rearrange, you end up with a mixture of products, when what we really want is a pure yield. So one of the big problems with alkylation is that your carbocation or carbocation character like carbon can rearrange and that gives you a mixture of products. It turns out we don't need to worry about that with alkanoylation. Uh, a carbonyl, uh, uh, the carbonyl over here is not going to rearrange, even if it has some positive character. So one advantage of the alkanoylation is you don't need to worry about rearrangements. I didn't need to worry about that here because a rearrangement would, wouldn't give us a different product. Since there's only two carbons here, it doesn't really matter which one attacks. So this is one case where the rearrangement was not a big issue. There's also some other disadvantages to Friedel Crafts alkylation that we might talk about later. So um, sometimes you use alkylation, but in many cases, alkanoylation is safer. Okay.
Well, that basically com completes our survey of chapter 15, since we didn't go through these mechanisms. The big thing to get from chapter 15 was to memorize what electrophile ends up attached to the benzene in each of these cases. Of course, the other thing from chapter 15 was Huggles rule, but you already went over that in the other video series. Um, I mean, the, the ones here that would probably give you the most trouble are nitration and sulfonation, because it's hardest to remember what the electrophile looks like from nitration and sulfonation. So you want to definitely memorize those, those electrophiles. But the rearrangement of the, uh, like if it was like a secondary or whatever, yeah. um, would you also get the primary or you would just get the secondary? You probably get a mix. But that already kind of defeats your purpose because in synthesis you want a pure yield. You don't want a mix. But just that's like draw the possible products you would draw. Ah, yeah. Um, usually, usually you should not take carbocation rearrangements into account unless there's a strong clue in the problem. Uh, but you might see a problem where they specifically said, this gives a mixture of products, and then that would be a clue, then you'd want to do the rearrangements. OK, so shall we move on to chapter 16? OK. Uh, I wanted to put these all on the blackboard at one time because it's good to have, I think, it's good to have in your notes one page with all the common electrophilic aromatic substitution electrophiles. This would be a good thing to have a nice clean copy of in your notes. All the electrophiles in one place. Remember, these are all electrophilic aromatic substitution. Commonly called, that's called EAS. EAS is the common abbreviation for electrophilic aromatic substitution. Uh, by the way, if you look at the notes you just took, you'll see that every single one of those reactions had some type of catalyst. Um, the halogenation and the Friedel Crafts reactions had Lewis acid catalysts. And the nitration and the sulfonation had sulfuric acid, which is a Bronsted Lowry acid catalyst. They all need catalysts because we know that it's hard to do the first step of unforming the aromatic benzene ring. 